Woof woof and thank you for joining us on this week's episode of Barking News from the Mad Dog News Network, the place where the news is so old that it somehow becomes relevant again. This week's top story, Marvel signifies that a new era of Heroes Reborn will be ushered in later this year. Given that 2021 is the 25th anniversary of the original Heroes Reborn event, something that was ushered in by both Jim Lee and Rob Liefeld as a way of symbolising a new age for the comics publisher, it brings speculation as to what ideas from the original will be incorporated into this new rendition. However, the slogan that was included with the announcement, Whatever Happened to the Earth's Mightiest Heroes, is a clear nod to the Alan Moore story from 1986, Whatever Happened to the Man of Tomorrow, which viewers will remember was an issue that was to signify a finale for the pre-crisis on Infinite Earth's Superman. So whether or not this event will be a new beginning, or an end of an era type tale, is still to be seen. But with previous comments from Marvel Tom Brevoort suggesting that there was going to be a rebirth for the Marvel Universe after the Avengers enter the Phoenix arc, it's easy to see where the speculation is coming from and where it might lead. In DC news, the character who is most famous for following the words Batman and will see his own ongoing series after Infinite Frontier in April. The series, just titled Robin, will be written by Josh Williamson, who you'll know from The Flash and Nailbiter, and will be illustrated by Wonder Woman's Gleb Melnikov. Jesus, I hope I'm pronouncing that one right. The series, which will follow Damian Wayne rather than Tim Drake, is said to be focusing on a new cast of characters, a new crew for Robin to surround himself with, along with a new mystery that he can solve, and lots and lots of fights. The first issue is set to hit shelves on April 27th. Our next story, Invincible, the series which is based on Robert Kirkman's image title has finally received a release date. The first three episodes are set to debut on Amazon Prime on March 26th, with it then adopting a weekly release schedule. A clip from the show also accompanied the announcement and it showed Mark Grayson flying high in the sky playing baseball with his dad, Omni-Man. If the adaption is even half as good as the series it's based on, this will definitely be one to watch. And if that waits too unbearable, why not watch a video talked about the 15 best fights from the comic? In this week's development in The War of No Words, Ray Fisher has now said that he would consider returning to the role of Cyborg if Zack Snyder was to ever direct a Justice League sequel. After everything that has gone on in the past couple of years between Fisher and Warner Media, and the fact that the details are still very, 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 very vague, it is surprising to hear. Especially so as Walter Ramada doesn't appear to be leaving Warner Media, and Ray Fisher has openly said that he doesn't want to work on another project again if it is associated with the Warner Media president. However, after last week's news that Zack Snyder says that he's done with the DCEU, the likelihood of this happening is very slim, but still, fan hope stays alive. Speaking of Zack Snyder, after initial reports that his director's cut of Justice League was originally going to be a four episode series, and then a six episode series, it is now being confirmed by Snyder himself that it is going to be one movie. With an estimated runtime of over four hours, this decision actually makes it more likely that Snyder can achieve his wish of seeing the film get a theatrical release. However, there is no word yet on if the movie being over four hours long makes it any more enjoyable. Before we continue, I'd just like to remind you that if you're enjoying this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe button so that you can become a part of the dog pound and make sure that you get your pulls all over that bell notification so that you never miss a video. Check us out on social media and we've also got Amazon affiliate links down below which greatly helps the channel and also if you could share this video on your Facebook, your Twitter, your Instagram or on any ready pages it would be greatly appreciated. But for now let's jump back into the news. In comic news it will be bittersweet to hear Donny Case has confirmed that April's Venom issue 200 will be his last on the series forever. Having helmed the title with artist Ryan Stegman since 2018, the run has seen the once Spider-Man foe be the centre of two comic-wide events. And as you'll remember, they were 2019's Absolute Carnage and the current King in Black title. Cates has said that King in Black was the thing that his run was building towards since issue 1, so although it is sad to see the title come to an end, hopefully it can end with as much of a bang as it began with. Now here at the Mad Dog News Network, we try our best to avoid real world news as much as we can because there's just too much of that already on the internet and it gets too many people down and some people just want a little bit of a show that's just about comics. However, after rioters attacking the Capitol Hill building were seen sporting the Punisher logo, there has been calls from numerous outlets which, let's be honest, pretty much just means people with a Twitter account, have made calls and put pressure on for Marvel to retire both the character and the logo. John Bernthal, the actor who played Frank Castle in the Netflix adaptation, took to Twitter to share his feelings. He denounced the rioters who were brandishing the iconic Skull logo, but also stated that they didn't understand what Frank stood for. We took this to our Instagram page, at Mad Dog Comics, to see how you weighed in on this debate. A staggering 91% of the voters thought that this was the dumbest argument ever, whilst only 9% thought that they actually had a point. The thing is, anyone can use a logo or an identity for their own purposes. But if people will ever be able to realise that fiction and 
reality are two separate things is yet to be seen. Earlier this week, rumours of Chris Evans returning to the role of Captain America surfaced online. Although this has neither been confirmed or denied by Marvel, speculation has started to begin. The main theories being that this will either be a cameo appearance, something to do with what if, or perhaps an alternate universe version of the character in the upcoming Doctor Strange sequel. Chris himself, and I'm hoping that I can call you Chris, responded to the news on Twitter by saying that this was news to him. However, viewers may remember that Benedict Cumberbatch used to say that he didn't know who Doctor Strange was just months before the casting was announced. Anthony Mackie, the actor who plays Falcon, said that he would be happy to see the team back together, but he's heard nothing on it just yet. However, this might not be possible if the theories that Chris Evans could be returning for an upcoming Invaders movie are to be believed. If more news on this follows, we'll be sure to report on it on an upcoming episode. Looking at the MCU's TV department, WandaVision is now the highest rated MCU property on Rotten Tomatoes. This comes from the critics' responses, which scored the three episode old series at an impressive 97%. However, reviews online have been mixed, with this news anchor in particular only watching it in the hopes that there's going to be a big payoff. Then again, our weatherman says that that means I'm just not smart enough to understand what's going on, rather than listening to any kind of valid criticism. Disappointing news for fans of the MCU movies now is Variety is reporting that Black Widow is likely to once again be pushed back from its current May 7th release date. Having originally been slated for release in 2020, Disney is now considering yet again putting the title on Disney Plus's premiere format. It's now being considered again as it's reported that Soul did much better than Mulan did when it premiered on the series. Alongside further delays for both Morbius and No Time to Die, which is the upcoming James Bond movie, it would be disappointing to see Black Widow pushed back yet again, but it wouldn't be surprising. However, considering that the ideal time for a Black Widow movie would have been about five years ago, what's an extra six months wait, am I right? Our last story for the week comes from the world of, and I'm going to make sure that I'm pronouncing this correctly, Manga, which is something that no one here at the Mad Dog News Network is um, is a fan of. But we'll give this one a go because Russia, the country which is most famously known as that place where Rocky Balboa trained in the snow, has had court hearings which resulted in popular animes Death Note, Tokyo Ghoul and Anu Yashiki, Anu Yashiki, Anu Yashiki? One of them's probably going to be correct, so just leave them all in. But those three anime in particular have been banned from certain websites within Russia after cases were presented that it caused violence and even death for Russian teenagers. But to us here, this sounds similar to when GTA is blamed for real life violence. But if we understand what either manga or anime is by the time that there's an update on this story, we will be sure to report on it. And it's now time for me to pass you over to our weatherman, who should learn that the toilet in my dressing room can flush and is definitely off limits to him. He's here with the forecast of all the comics that are coming out this week. Woof woof, you're here with me, the agitated puppy, as we're going to go through the weather forecast of the upcoming books for this week. And I'd just like to say to the news anchor over there that if you don't want me using your toilet, get a better lock on it and stop leaving food in your bin. But these are the hot, hot books that you need to be looking out for this Wednesday, January 27th. So kicking it off with week four of the Future State event from DC Comics. Everything that you need to pick up to make sure that you're following this event is right here. So you've got Dark Detective issue two, you've got Batman Superman issue 1, you've got Suicide Squad issue 1, Aquaman issue 1 and Superman vs Imperious Lex issue 1. As well you've also got the Legion of Superheroes issue 1 so those are all the titles that are tied into Future State. There isn't really too much that I feel like you need to be looking out for from DC this week. So we're just going to jump into Marvel and if you're following the King in Black event the only book that you need to pick up is Namor issue 3. Other titles that you've got for Marvel we've got Spencer's Amazing Spider-Man issue 58, we've got X-Men issue 7, 17. You've got Daredevil 26 by Chip Zdarsky. You've got Wolverine issue 9 down here. You've got Fantastic Four issue 28 not far behind it. And Excalibur issue 17 for any of you Brits out there. As well, we do have to give him an honourable mention because we've got the 18th issue of Jim Zub's Conan the Barbarian. In terms of your other publishers, just looking at Image here, you've got Spawn issue 314. In case you wanted to catch up on the previous 313 issues over the weekend, you've got Monstrous issue 31 and you've got Nailbiter Returns issue 9. Boom Studios also has a heavy downpour of books this week, so you've got Something Is Killing the Children issue 14, you've got We Only Find Them When the Dead issue 5, and you've also got Firefly issue 25. So those are all the main books that I think you need to be looking out for this week. Obviously you can go and check the full list online, but that's all for me this week, and I'm going to pass you over to my news anchor now, who I'm still waiting for him to reply to my invitation on if he's going to come to my birthday party, or if I'm going to be sitting alone yet again. But I'll see you all next week, and remember, woof woof, such a smug prick, shit not again. <laughs>
Well, thank you for joining us in this week's episode of Barking News from us here at the Mad Dog News Network. As always, we hope you enjoyed this and we'd like you to comment below with what the story was that excited you most this week. And before we go, we'd like to remind you to like this video, subscribe if you're new here, and share this video wherever you can as it does really help the channel. Feel free to check out some of our other videos as well, but until next time, just make sure that you stay safe, stay reading the best books that you can, and stay mad all you dogs. Woof woof.